Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, uh, given that it's a few minutes past, uh, I think we can start. Uh, maybe some more people will, will arrive. Um, but yeah, uh, welcome. And uh, uh <laughs> wait, B before, before we properly start, <coughs> Chad, forget what I just said. Uh, yeah, welcome to this session, which is uh, GNOME Mobile Live. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and um, in this uh, session, so we don't have a ton prepared. It's uh, the idea is like we have a phone. Um, like maybe you have questions. We have a lot of things on there that we can kind of show. Uh, at we can use that as a jumping off point to start talking about like a lot of things. Like uh, I would definitely touch a little bit on the platform side. Uh, Jonas is maybe gonna talk about shell kind of like goings on. Robert has a lot of interesting things with cameras. And I don't know, yeah, like if people have questions, you can, uh, yeah, just like anytime. Um, I don't know what the microphone situation for that is, but I guess we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, maybe to introduce ourselves very quickly, uh, I'm Tobias, I'm on the design team. Um, yeah, I do all kinds of design things. Uh, I work for Purism, where I've, yeah, for the last five or so years, I've worked on various parts of the platform and like making them adaptive and so on. Uh, and yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jonas. Uh, I am on the Shell team. Uh, I did this uh, mobile Shell thing last year as part of a, uh, of a government funding in Germany. Uh, it's called Prototype Fund. It's very great. You should all apply. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm here to answer all your questions about uh, technical details and stuff. Hello. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Robert. I work on Mada in for GNOME, um, and maybe some know me from work on Firefox and also now cameras for a while, <laughs> for a short while. Yeah, and I work for Collabora. Uh, Collabora. Okay, so I guess we can just start with demoing a bit. All right. Um, then I would start a little bit by showing kind of the state of the ecosystem, the state of um, the, the mobile GNOME shell also. And yeah, I think just in, in general, maybe those of you who have not kept up with the GDK GNOME kind of ecosystem, um, it's actually grown a huge amount over the last year or two uh, with the introduction of Libertwida and like all these new widgets and of course like advances on the flat bike side and so on are kind of like making all this possible. Uh, and just like to show you a few fairly random things in no particular order, like this is Ambrol, it's Emmanuel Das's uh, music player, which uh, primarily has the feature of looking really good. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, for example, here, this is an interesting new circle app. Uh, it's called Comic Q, and so it's like a comic reader. And I found these very interesting, like 1950s uh, comics. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait, did I just move the thing? Yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, you can like whatever look at the comics and stuff. Um, what else do we have? This is Loop, the new image viewer that, um, fingers crossed, is going to become the new core image viewer in 45 in the fall. Um, and yeah, it's basically I of GNOME but nice and modern, uh, and a bunch of other things. I think it's also like more performant due to various fancy things. Um, and yeah, uh, I can open maybe a different folder with other images, but I, I don't know. Like y you'll believe me that uh, scrolling between things is nice. It's a bit annoying to switch. Oh yeah, you can uh, rotate stuff. Woo, look at that. <laughs> very exciting. Um, but yeah, this is this is very cool and sort of yeah, an example of like how all of these changes in the platform kind of like are making their way back into the core apps and sort of revitalizing that also to some degree. Uh, this is also very interesting. It's a app that uh, very recently had its first release. It's called Tuba. Um, it's this guy. And uh, it's a, a Mastodon client. And yeah, it has all the things that, that you would want, um, like whatever uh, image viewer and um, whatever you can like and, and subscribe to stuff or whatever. And <laughs> uh, it, it, it looks, looks cool and modern. Um, then what else do we have here? Uh, yeah, the just like default GNOME weather app works great on phones, as you can see. Um, uh, the weather tonight is not looking so good, but um, you know, the it is what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like maybe uh, this is actually pretty interesting also. Um, like this is a notes app. I'm not sure how maintained it's been lately, but like sort of as a as a sort of cool example of like a uh, adaptive like notes app that that does all the things you would want. It's it's pretty cool. It's called uh, Paper. What else do we have here? Um, this is pretty cool. 
uh, it's a uh, Wordle. Oh, uh, I'm in s some uh, Arch Linux room and I'm getting notifications. I'm getting rid of them by swiping. Uh, great new feature. Uh, if we can uh, try playing Wordle here or something. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like in 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 general, what I'm uh, wh what what I want to show here is like we have an ecosystem nowadays that's uh, very. Uh uh, very widely, like sort of, uh, has has very widely adopted like the adaptive kind of patterns and um, and widgets. Um, <laughs> oh, and this is our lunch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> slightly <laughs> late, but I guess we'll, we'll eat it later. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, what else? Yeah, obviously, like all of all of this work is powered by Libidwida, which is our new platform library. Um, uh, mostly developed and, and maintained by Alex Mikhailenko, but also there's many contributions from others. Um, and I think that has really like sort of um, th that has really like been been a step change like in in sort of the quality of, of the ecosystem and of apps, um, because like all of these like annoying things are now much easier and and like more automatic to do the right way uh, in terms of like how to use various design patterns and widgets and so on. And that's been really cool to see and like sort of how how that like better tooling, like really creates a bigger ecosystem and scales in a way that I don't think we've we've seen before. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I could talk about this for as as long as people want, but uh, <laughs> in in the interest of time, uh, maybe we uh, like go through all of our like areas a little bit. Everyone talks about some stuff, and then yeah, we we see how much how many questions there are and so on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Jonas, do you want to talk about the shell? Uh, we've seen the the. Most most parts already now. Um, yeah, the things I've done uh, l last year mostly are like we had the GNOME Shell project already. It worked pretty well already on on the phone. Like it just started up. You could already do basic things. It just was not optimized for uh, for the screen resolution that phones have. Like for for the sc smaller screen sizes. So what we basically did what we basically did was the same as you would do on a website, making it responsive, kind of. You know, we have the same code base. Um, it's all the same code, it's all the same JavaScript code. We just like tweaked a few things to make the overview look like that. Um, we introduced a fancy new lock screen with a pin unlock. Let me show you that. And I'm gonna show you my very secure pin here. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, yeah, we had to we had to uh, introduce a bunch of things for uh, for the stuff that you want on phones, like uh, calling on the lock screen, where like uh, you show the calls app on top of the lock screen to receive an incoming call. That's like super new stuff that I did two three weeks ago or something. And yeah, that's like uh, it's in a pretty good state right now. Uh, we're we're quite far. Um, I would say that you could actually use it um, if the hardware was like <laughs> at a point where. Uh, where things just work and where uh, where the battery lasts and where like the microphone and and the sound works, which is like full of unfortunate problems. But the post market people are on it, and uh, we trust them to to get things ready eventually. But yeah, the, the, like from the GNOME side, uh, we're in a pretty good state. We have stuff working on apps really well. Uh, we are getting there with the touch support in GTK. It's getting better every day. Um, there's still a few bugs all over the platform, which make the experience somewhat annoying sometimes, but uh, contributions will come, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, I can talk a bit more about hardware uh, because um, what you guys see here is like a OnePlus 6. Um, that's like one of the best supported things we have right now. It's uh, been ported all by the post market people, so kudos to them. It's, it's very great that we have that. Um, the OnePlus 6 is like just a basic Android phone. Um, and they made it work for Linux AppStream, like without any of the Android stuff. Um, right, so this is like performance-wise and battery life-wise the best you can get right now. Um, sadly, it's probably not gonna have a camera, like we don't really know. Or like the camera state is looking very bad, but like for everything else it's looking really good. Um, and yeah, this is like the phone that we use for demoing because it's just so fast and, and works so well for phones. Um, there's also the PinePhone Pro and the PinePhone, which, like, the PinePhone has super nice hardware enablement, but it's also kind of slow. <laughs> and the PinePhone Pro does also have nice hardware enablement, but it has issues like that it runs very hard. Um, so it's not exactly useful as, like, a daily driver thing. 
but I think we'll get there pretty soon. <laughs> and then there's obviously the Librem 5 by Purism, which uh, does have the advantage that at least like people are actively working on it all the time, and uh, it has a working camera, it uh, has working calls, um, people are actually using it out there for, for their like daily phone stuff. Um, so yeah, this is also an alternative. <laughs> All right, um, anything else I can say about hardware? Did I forget any platforms? No, I don't think so. All right, uh, then let's continue talking about cameras. Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, I need to switch on the light shortly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as I said before, uh, I got hooked on mobile couple of months ago by these guys um, and also started to yeah try it out on a on a pine phone pro in this case and um, as most of you or well those of you who tried Linux on mobile probably know the one of the unfortunate things is that the camera situation is not very where it probably should be um, so uh, yeah a couple of months ago I started like looking around like what could be done about that and turned out that most of the building blocks were actually already there and we just needed <laughs> to kind of wrap that all up and for that I'll shortly use the chance because we have this awesome board here to make a short reminder like how video currently works in the stack and how we want it to work and yeah, <laughs> so um, classically start with the kernel, specifically video for Linux 2. Can you see that? Yeah. And normally this is well, this is state of art right now, is basically that, you know, uh, here's your app then. <laughs> Talks to the kernel. Maybe you have something like GStreamer. Um, what? And your app is on top of that. And if you are a cute developer, you probably have cute multimedia. Uh, I make it this way, which talks to GStreamer, which talks to the kernel. So, um, as many of you may know, like um, already, like more than ten years ago, there's a lot of cameras, especially like on mobile devices, which um, have we call them complex cameras they they are more complex <laughs> 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 so this part becomes really hard because there are apps you can do such stuff for like directly with the kernel interfaces like megapixels millipixels and so on but um yeah there's a lot of logic that you would like to have and wouldn't it be nice to have a library to do that for you that you can just use? And well, there is now, and it's called, um, well, how would, how would you call it? It's Lab Camera, which is here, and you could now use it with your app. Or with GStreamer and, you know, all the stuff that comes from there. Uh, which, yeah, so you might think about Lip Camera as like the Mesa for cameras. It's like a user space, like more or less driver button. So, but then we have situations where we have lots of apps and we have lots of cameras and the situation is still kind of, um, yeah. You might, for a modern system, you might want to have more control, and wouldn't it be nice to have something which 
you know, kind of um, allows you to, for example, have settings and define rules like which a uh, which app is allowed to use which camera and so on. And you might have heard about it. This goes to lip camera. Now we have pipe wire. So pipe wire can talk to lip camera, but it also can talk to video for Linux too. Um, especially this is still often desirable at the moment because there are certain features supported for uh, with a video for two Linux uh, video for the Linux two backend, but not by the lip camera backend. But this eventually, hopefully will go away. Um, and on top of Pipewire, you can have now your app <laughs> or GStreamer <laughs> or cute multimedia. <coughs> and, um, and for Pipewire, there is Wire Plumber. <laughs> This is in the way. Okay. I just leave it with this. Wire plumber. Um, think it about like pipe wire is like the dump thing, which doesn't know anything about policies. Um, everything policy related, like which camera should be exposed where and so on, is something you define in wire plumber. That's a session manager, we call it. And uh, yeah, so, oh yeah, and just here we could no, also have the portal here, which then gets in the way between your app and pipe wire and ask the user first if you actually should be allowed to use the camera. And so we have all that. Isn't that beautiful? I, I wanted to do this for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it turns out, like for the PinePhone Pro, there were pitches, patches for lip camera, and there was pipe wire support, GStreamer support, basically it's, it was all there, it was full of bugs and there still are some, but uh, essentially, um, yeah, we can wrap that all together and um, that's, that's what we did over the last month and now I'm going to do a short demo about that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And I need to switch the phones. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, hi. Ah, so my super safe thing is away. And uh, yeah, for the GNOME ecosystem, we have now three cool apps that I would like to shortly show you. Um, first of all, the upcoming. Uh, hopefully new uh, camera app by Maxima Maximiliano and Jamie. Uh, short applause. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 which, will which will hopefully replace cheese at some point. And now, uh, fingers crossed that everything will work. <laughs> so, uh, hi there, can you see something? Oh, uh, do you have the light to, to uh, oh no, to the, 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 the oh phone? Oh yeah. Yeah, isn't it? It's nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, maybe do you do you see the structure? Do 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 you see our nice structure? We 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 built that yesterday at the at the local hack space. Uh, the space, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for you for for your support. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 for the other genius idea about the the filming camera here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, but back to back to the camera app. Uh, this is snapshot. Uh, you see, uh, you hopefully see it has a nice, uh, like mobile ready design. And yeah, what can it do? Uh, it can take photos, and they show up. You will also notice that it is a front camera, so it shows me like the image for myself. It's rotated, like or flipped, which is what you would like to have. Oh, come on. Um, and it can also record videos. So, well, fingers crossed that will work as well. Hello, hello. Uh, notice the fancy animation when you click the, the button. <laughs> what? Yeah. And yeah. Now we have a video and it plays. It would even have sound, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And it has some other cool features and it will, will get more features and you can switch a camera and so on. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this app. I really hope we'll get that as our yeah, default camera app uh, in, in GNOME 45. And let's close that again. Um, let's carry on with Authenticator. Authenticator is a, uh, how you call this kind of apps? Like Authenticator app. You you know what it is. So wh what does it wh what does it have to do with cameras? Well, uh, you know, like on on phones, you normally want to maybe scan a QR code. So um, I click on camera. It's a wrong camera by default. This will change soon. We can detect uh, what is a front and a back camera if you describe it in the device tree for the device. Um, so we switch cameras. Or can can you ho can you get that? Uh, can you hold it here, maybe? So we have a QR code. Here. So we have a QR code. It's a it's a screenshot of, of Authenticator, <laughs> as you may notice, but it doesn't matter. And bam! It used a camera. It used that bar. <laughs> and oh yeah. And here is our fake. Uh, uh, two-factor authentication thingy, and yeah, we now have our code. Um, oh yeah, what what might be? Ah, no, I come back to that later. And okay, now next level. This is Dino. Dino is a XMPP chat app. It's really cool. It's new. It's now on Flatter. Um, <laughs> And Dino can do video calls. <laughs> and um, is it? Yeah. This is the right account, right? Okay. <laughs> the Dino developers are also with uh, us here. And so we gonna do. Uh, also, side note, uh, the, the awesome camera setup here is also brought to you by the Dino team. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> we can oh. <laughs> notice, uh, yeah, the the over like it is touch away, um, like it has a notice a nice UI. So <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I, I I'll skip the. It can also do um, like how you call it and more people. Group calls, but we won't we won't do it for now. <laughs> if you're interested in that, come talk to us later. Uh, yeah, that's Dino. Um, this is our first three GNOME apps, um, which fully supported. You might now ask, what about Qt? Qt, Qt, Qt. Uh, uh, yeah, in my camera. Qt does. Yeah, hello. This is a cute app, cute with cute multimedia, as you saw this. It just it uses GStreamer. It basically works. Uh, what you would notice is uh, it has a 90 degree rotation. That is nam the a normal thing on on phones that the camera is actually 90 degree rotated. And um, this is described in the device tree in the kernel. Um, what we need from the stack and what these three other apps that we already demoed can do now is rotate the output. And this is something, uh, this, is, this doesn't yet work in Qt Multimedia. 
I need a dev. I, if you like to work on Cube Multimedia and GStreamer and um, would like to see this working on um, this whole stack working for cute apps, uh, please talk to us. Uh, let's let's hack together and let's make it work. Uh, because then it becomes super easy and we will have hopefully lots of apps using cameras in cool ways. In cool ways. Uh, yeah, that's, I think that's it for now. Uh, thanks <laughs> for the camera part. <laughs>
Uh, and the way this works right now is that, oh, this is actually not sharp anymore, but who cares? Um, the way this works right now is that they, these two panels are drawn by the shell, and we want them to be drawn by the shell, but like the way it works on most modern platforms, like iOS and Android, uh, is that the panel is still drawn by the shell, but the background is actually the app. So like the app is allowed to paint to the whole screen, um, but the app gets gets a like gets an event or gets like uh, gets an information from the compositor that it cannot or it should not display any content in like the areas of the panel, and that's actually the same thing you want for the notch up there, um, because like obviously if you show content there, the user is not going to see it, and in case of the panel, uh, the user well uh, is going to see a bar on top or like the clock on top. So like we want to tell the app, hey, um, you can draw there. Feel free to draw like some background color or an image or something. But please don't draw anything that's gonna like that's gonna mess with content that's on top over it. Um, and yeah, that's basically what we what we're gonna need like GTK or like toolkits and shell to work together. And yeah, maybe we'll get there in like uh, the next few months. We'll see. <laughs> uh, right, that's and that's uh, anything else. I can talk about what else are we gonna do soon. <laughs> We're gonna upstream everything. Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> now that we have modern developers here. Uh, this is a perfect time to talk about it. <laughs> um, so like all these patches are downstream right now. Um, like the the plan was just to like iterate quickly and. Uh, yeah, like I, I did my fork of GNOME shell and mother and like put all the stuff in there and uh, I have like, I don't know, like 300 commits on top of this stuff right now or even 400 or something. Um, it's all like organized neatly into branches which are getting more complex and more complex. <laughs> um, and yeah, like we're already like starting to upstream parts of it, uh, but it obviously all takes time. Like you have the reviews and uh, people, are people are already uh, uh, filled up with work, so yeah, it, it's gonna take time, but eventually we're hopefully gonna be able to upstream all the things, and uh, you can just like run your normal GNOME shell package in your normal distro, and it's gonna automatically resize to like this phone thing here. Um, but yeah, right now you just have to run. Yeah, question? Should we get your mic? Yeah, yeah. Ah, five minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that does make sense. Um, yeah. Then uh, anyway, like maybe we should switch to questions now. You have one more thing to say? Sorry that I forgot that before. Just one last thing about the camera the stack. I mean, most of you are probably more interested in apps. So yeah, please go and write, write apps using cameras. We have now way better APIs. Um, just by the way, uh, libRTC also will support like Pipewire soon. We have somebody here who will hopefully implement it in Firefox very soon. Um, so in way more apps, also in, in Electron apps, um, cameras should start to work. If you are interested in the low level, like if you are a hardware person or something, um, this all, or what we just demoed, is not as it used to be kind of like device specific, but you just need the camera to work on your device. Like if you have a device and want to make it work, like... Um, work with us or come talk to us to uh, yeah get a lip camera driver. <laughs> um, that would be awesome. Uh, the next one, I mean, this was a PinePhone Pro, as I said, but uh, the next one I hope to see soon is a Librem 5 and hopefully way more over the next year or something. Yeah. Okay, so now questions are there. All right, uh, that uh, on uh, systems like Android, not sure about uh, iOS. Uh, there are multiple, mm, how to say, if I, on my phone, open the settings and go to audio settings, I can see there are multiple sliders for like uh, notifications, uh, multimedia, or uh, um, alarm clock and stuff like that. If something like that is planned, because sometimes I just want the alarm clock to ring, but mm, nothing else. Uh, I think we have this already, right? To a degree. Um, there's per app uh, configuration. No, I think like there's one. W it's a bit 
like not ideal where like one of the sliders in there is like system sounds and I think that's one of them and I think then there's another one and but yeah we we've definitely like discussed this on the design team fairly recently and uh, it's it's something we're looking into all right thank you uh, other questions Uh, please, could you tell us, uh, do you have any comparison of what is power consumption of uh, GNOME Mobile compared to maybe on the same device to Android open source project? Like, is it consuming less, more, same? Um, like, the things that we can influence as like Shell and, and like GNOME stuff upwards, um, for us the thing that mostly matters is the thing with freezing apps, because like what Android and iOS can do is like freeze user space, freeze apps that are inactive, and that's how they, uh, that's how they prevent apps from like using power all the time. Um, so that's something we are looking into, and we might look into, we might do in the future. But way more importantly, right now is hardware enablement. So like you have the kernel drivers, uh, which are somewhat only focused on making things work and not really saving power right now. And uh, this is the stuff which which we need to get worked out. Um, on the OnePlus 6, it's actually pretty good already. Like the, the battery life is a day or more, even if you use it. <laughs> um, and yeah, on the other phones, it's it's a bit more tricky the situation. But in general, I think like even without the freezing apps thing, um, if you remember to close your apps all the time, we can we can get to a pretty good battery life. <laughs> yep. Also, maybe a short note. I mean, we do have w this is our Wayland now, and Wayland is a sane API. Like <laughs> uh, we have proper like yeah we can do proper acceleration we have good apis to make things very power efficient and lots of apps are already so quite power efficient like in gtk there's lots of work and yeah, many projects thank you and if i could another question does push notifications work on gnome mobile <laughs> yeah not yet uh, there's there's apparently but people here who are working on it uh, and i talked to them to uh, yesterday already, uh, and there's going to be an API for like Linux and push notifications, which is going to be universal for all the apps. And when this stuff is supported, then it's naturally going to work on GNOME Mobile too. Uh, yeah. Next question. Are, are we out of time? Okay. Thank you. One more. Okay. <laughs> quick. 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 <laughs> So with the convergence and uh, changing the how the apps looks and behave, how will that work? Uh, with small, small four factors, and you move the close button, how will that work with convergence when you drag a window to somewhere else? Hello? Yeah. Uh, how does it work if I drag a... Uh, how will it intended to work? You, you were talking about how to mm -hmm. change the, like the close button should be not showing when you have a on the phone, but... If you drag it to a, a big monitor that is connected to the phone with a convert convergent desktop I mean, environment. like, w I don't think we have like a cohesive UX plan for that specific setup where you like are using both the mobile thing and the other thing on the same live system at the same time. Um, but if I were to guess how we would do it, like probably yeah, you like explicitly move it over there and then it just like has regular desktop affordances, right? Like it has the close button, it whatever you can resize it and so on. Whereas like this is a more constrained kind of setup. Also, we're out of time, I think. We're just doing server-side decoration or something. <laughs>